Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this wonderful webinar. I am your host, Arheen, and today I shall take you on a tour through a world disregarded by most people. Welcome to the world of invertebrates. This webinar shall cover some interesting aspects of invertebrates or creepy crawlies and show you why you should like them, why they are useful, oh yes they are, and my experience with these guys. The rules for the webinar have been posted in the chat box. Please check it. Let's proceed. First, we should know what invertebrates are. People usually call them bugs or creepy crawlies, but those are just vague and false terms. I shall actually call invertebrates by their short form, inverts. These guys do not have bones like us. Instead, some have an outer skeleton called an exoskeleton. These guys mostly go unnoticed as they are small. Some examples of invertebrates include insects, spiders, centipedes, earthworms, snails, octopuses, jellyfish, etc. Again, these guys go unnoticed because they are small. But small is not scary. Now, to why you should like inverts. First, we should know why people even dislike these animals. Why do people dislike them? Well, we have very little information about these guys and this can lead to misinformation and myths actually spreading about them. People like your parents, teachers or friends may have actually told you to stay away from invertebrates when you were a kid because they might have heard myths like they go into your ear and eat your brain, but that's not true. Invertebrates like spiders, ants and centipedes are often portrayed as negative or evil characters in movies, generally with their features exaggerated. That could also lead to people disliking them. And also, so many fake videos circulate around social media telling you to stay away from them or that they are dirty and disgusting animals, which comes to this part. People think that invertebrates are yucky or disgusting just because some of them might live in the soil or eat decaying matter. But that's simply not true. Now to the part about liking these creepy crawlies. How are they likable? Well, we should respect the fact that invertebrates have been on the planet far longer than us. In fact, they have arrived 530 million years ago, whereas humans just came 200,000 years back. They have evolved to have amazing abilities and appearances. Inverts are also beneficial to the ecosystems they are part of. You see, they are spread across multiple biomes or habitats, and without them, ecosystems would just fall apart or simply get disrupted. A really good example of this is with spiders. If they were not a part of forest ecosystems, there would be simply too many bugs and too little plants for all the bugs to eat. Hence, both populations are actually at a loss. As they have evolved so much over millions of years, some invertebrates like praying mantises have developed excellent hunting strategies. We'll come to that a little later. And of course, some of them are just stunning. You have butterflies, peacocks, spiders, starfish, and more in the upcoming slides. Ancient people also showed an interest in invertebrates. They made them heroes in mythology. For example, Anansi the clever spider from Jamaica, beetles as gods from Egypt, etc. And despite many rumors and controversies, they are clean. If one speck of dust falls on a creature like an insect or a spider, they will immediately start cleaning themselves. Humans actually have thousands of specks of dust on their bodies, which means invertebrates are actually cleaner than us. In fact, ants 
release an antibacterial fluid called marmacassin, which they clean their bodies with. So they literally have no bacteria on their bodies. Invertebrates are not only cool, but they are also useful. Yes, they are useful. As they are important to ecosystems, invertebrates like bees and butterflies help with pollination of plants. You see, they are attracted to the nectar in flowers and will pollinate them to get more nectar. These flowers then turn into fruits once they are pollinated and we humans actually eat those fruits. They are also important for farming, mainly as decomposers. Invertebrates like earthworms help farmers with composting. What they do is they basically decompose organic matter like fruit peels and vegetables, etc. And the poop, yes, poop of the earthworms is used as plant fertilizers. People usually sell these guys in the pet trade. Believe it or not, people actually keep invertebrates as pets. So they are used for money making. In fact, one of the most expensive invertebrates cost 1,300 US dollars. They are also used for money making as invertebrates are used for the development of weaponized machines, food like uh, honey from bees and clothing materials like silk from silkworms. They are also helpful for medical research. You see, there is a species of worm called a planarian, which has regenerative abilities, which humans are trying to actually incorporate into soldiers. Scientists are trying to incorporate this in soldiers as they will have far better healing abilities. And if they lose a limb or something like that, they can just regrow it. Jellyfish venom is also used for making antibiotics. It is used for treating various diseases like arthritis, joint pain, etc. How cool is that? Could you have ever realized invertebrates were that useful? There are so many species of invertebrates. They are the most diverse group of all animals, making up a whopping 97% of the animal kingdom. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Colors also vary among the 1 million plus species which exist on Earth today. In fact, humans have just one living species. Invertebrate diversity also means that you have some mind blowing species. Take the colossal squid, for example. These guys can grow up to 40 feet long. Yes, you heard me right. This makes them the world's largest invertebrates. You also have the peacock jumping spiders. Males have beautiful coloration to attract females. And like peacocks, they even dance for them. That's pretty cool. Peacock mantis shrimp also have amazing and shiny colors. But the cool thing is, not only can they sense infrared, UV, and polarized light, they also have two specialized legs to deliver a strong punch to their prey to crack open the shells in order to access the soft meat in them. The force is so strong from this punch that they have been able to smash through glass containers and aquariums. So you can think of them as the Mike Tysons of the invertebrate world. Now you have the praying mantises. You guys may have heard of them, I don't know. These guys are also excellent hunters with spiked front legs called raptorial legs, which they use to catch their prey. They also have one of the best vision of any other insect. They also possess excellent camouflage. Some look like twigs, some look like leaves, some look like flowers, and some look like bark. Those guys were pretty cool, right? But the next creatures in this list are possibly even cooler. Metallic pony ants possess awesome color. 
they are actually purple and green, whereas most ants are just red and black. The immortal jellyfish or Turritopsis dorni can literally live up to their name. Yes, they are immortal. I'm not going to explain it in this webinar as it's very complicated. But the main thing is they can actually switch to their larval stage and back to the adult stage and can do so infinitely. Now you have the stalk eyed flies. These guys look both comical and weird as they have eyes on stalks. Imagine my eyes are like here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They even have whiskers on those stalks. Have you seen fireflies at night? They are absolutely stunning, right? But fireflies are not actually flies. They are actually beetles. They have glowing abdomens, which glow to send messages to possible mates. Insect social media, I guess. Happy with your webinar experience. Meet another happy someone. The happy face spider. This is another cool creature because these guys have smiling faces on their abdomens. It's just a pattern. But the sad thing is they are an endangered species. And last, but certainly not the least of all cool invertebrates are the tardigrades. These guys are also known as water bears. They are microscopic. So those teeth and claws you see will not harm you at all. They are the most resilient animals on planet Earth. Scientists have found out that these guys can stand extreme conditions like extreme heat, extreme cold, and even the radiation and vacuum in outer space. Yes, these guys have been sent up there. But these guys are not aliens as they live in muddy water. That's insane. Now, I find invertebrates to be pretty impressive animals. I hope you guys do now. Most people actually hate them though. The next sequence of a few slides shall show my experience with invertebrates. Most people have told you that insects and spiders are dangerous. Or are they? Well, some species, very few, have actually been known to be dangerous to humans, but only if they are provoked. These guys won't do anything if you do not scare them. Remember, they are more scared of you than you are of them. Remember that. It is like a giant breaking into your house. And if you have no option to run, you would of course try to threaten the giant, right? Well, this is exactly what inverts do. What they do is they might give you a threat posture before actually attacking you. If you do not scare them when they are doing so, you literally have nothing to worry about. Again, remember, they are more scared of you than you are of them. So it is just a myth that they are out there to bite or sting you or they will enter your ears and eat your brain. The only thing which enters your ears are the rumors about these creatures. So they aren't that dangerous. And get this, invertebrates are also the stars of social media. Yes, you heard me right. Many kids YouTube channels use snails as mascots. Funny TikToks and compilations have been posted about insects as well. Cool documentaries about the micro world have been posted all over the face of YouTube. On Instagram, there are cool macro photos posted of insects and spiders. Those pictures will also come in the upcoming slides, which are clicked by me. But again, those people might love invertebrates as much as I do. But why do I even like them? But because again, most people hate them. Well, I had a fascination for animals since my childhood. Although people told me that insects and spiders were dangerous or scary or weird, my interest did not shift from them. For you guys, it might have. That's the reason you might have even joined this webinar. I also love going on treks and searching under rocks and leaves 
for cool insects and spiders. I watched many YouTube videos on these guys and also learned how to keep them. Yes, you heard me right. I keep insects and spiders. Channels like Brave Wilderness and Scanada and Exotic Slayer have inspired me to make my own videos about invertebrates. This brings us to my YouTube channel. Let's keep it short. It has harbored many memories about invertebrates. It is called ABSE, which stands for Arene's Biological Science Experiments. And over the course of more than a year, it has gained more than 2000 people, no wait, 200 people to subscribe to the channel. This channel actually shows more information about invertebrates and natures, more than this webinar. So you could check it out and be one of those 200 plus people who have subscribed to it. So please head over to it. I am going to post a link in the chat box right now. Yes, there we go. Now you can head over to the channel and click the subscribe button to show your interest and support for invertebrates. This is a cool wall of photographs, which I have put over here. These pictures have been clicked over the course of a few years because filming for my YouTube channel has led me to click these pictures. Post your feedback about these pictures in the chat box. I'll check the feedback later. Now, invertebrates have hopefully been really cool to us now, right? You also have the hardcore fans of invertebrates who not only study them, have jobs devoted to keeping, collecting, and of course, studying them. Oh yes, some people do this for a living. They study the importance of invertebrates, their behavior, and how they affect ecosystems in a positive way. Again, remember what I had said earlier, invertebrates are beneficial to ecosystems. So hats off to the ecologists, invertebrate zoologists, marmacologists, acarologists, arachnologists, wildlife photographers, and of course, the invertebrate zoologists for actually making invertebrates so damn interesting. I actually want to pursue a career in invertebrates myself. Now you have the hobbyists. They are also hardcore fans of invertebrates because some of them, like me, keep insects and spiders as pets. Yes, they do. Some of them also breed and sell them to other keepers and collectors. This has led to many endangered species actually being saved because now habitat destruction isn't a problem for them as they are kept in captivity. An example of this is with a tarantula called the sapphire gooty tarantula. They live in Gooty, India, and they live on trees, but because, of, but, but because of deforestation, their habitats are actually being destroyed. But people actually keep these guys in the pet trade, which means they breed and sell them, which means they are actually safe now. And hence, invert hobbyists are the hardcore fans of invertebrates. Hats off to those guys. Some hobbyists like me, also have posted videos about invertebrates on YouTube. Here is a slide full of this. You have documentaries, videography tutorials, filming them in the wilderness, uh, then yeah, many other stuff posted about them, like keepers tips, how to keep them like tutorials and their experience with the micro world. These guys help spread awareness about invertebrates. Now, even you can spread awareness about these guys. Here's how you can do so. First, you should like them. Turn that liking into probably loving them. And finally, doing it. Saving invertebrates and nature is not only beneficial to life forms like, of course, invertebrates. It is also beneficial to us humans in the long term. 
some methods to actually save nature are studying invertebrates from, I don't know, books, uh, online, other places. Then not killing these guys just because you are scared of them. Sharing this information with other people and probably even considering keeping them. I don't know. It's not compulsory. If you want to, you can actually keep them. To better study the micro world, I shall recommend some books to you guys. I actually have some of these books in my possession. You have every creature has a story over here. This book showcases information about cool insects and other animals. You have on a trail of ants over here. This is a field guide to the ants of India. And it also showcases information about how you can study them, observe them, and probably even keep them. You have forest ecology, which is of course about the ecology of forests. And you have the wasp that brainwashed the caterpillar. It's a very interesting book. It shows how evolution took a very big step on creatures like invertebrates. Do you want to read about brain controlling wasps and massive snails? Well, read this book. Here's a book which is not in my possession, but I shall also recommend it to you guys. It is called The Invertebrate Tree of Life, which shows the significance of invertebrates and gives the most up-to-date information about the micro world. Now, any questions about this webinar? I'm sure you people do. Please post your questions in the chat box and I shall answer them. You can even unmute yourselves to ask the questions. How do you identify dangerous invertebrates? How do I identify them? Uh, uh, there are very few species which are actually dangerous, but uh, like if you read about them or uh, if you use like insect identifying apps, you can actually find out what species they are and find out if they are dangerous or not. Now, but what if we what if we encounter them suddenly in the wild? Again, before entering the wilderness, you should actually like research and read about them, right? Okay, next. Uh, so now someone has asked a question. Uh, how many terrariums do I have? I have this one oh, made of Legos. Then I have this. So that's two. I also have this pine cone winter terrarium. I have one in my background. It is made for sheet web spiders. They actually build massive webs over trees. So this is my replication of their natural habitat. Okay. How is the jellyfish immortal? So the immortal jellyfish can actually uh, switch itself from its adult stage to its larval or younger stage. And it can do this infinitely. And scientists are trying, still trying to figure out how they do this. Arin, how are insects used to make weapons because you showed it in the slide? Uh, so you know the mantis shrimp, right? I covered it in the slide. So yes. they deliver these strong punches to their prey. Scientists are trying to make robots which can uh, actually give punches that strong so that they can use, they can be used for construction for uh, for making weapons etc then okay. do i keep spiders of course i do yes i have one over here what are the natural habitats of tardigrades and can i keep them uh, i don't know how to keep tardigrades but they are found in muddy water they can be identified under a very strong microscope so if you have access to test tubes and microscopes, you can probably see them. But what about Irene? Yes. Irene, you're saying that we have to use microscopes and test tubes to like yes. articulate things. So yes. are they tiny or are they like little? They're very tiny. Big? They're very tiny creatures. They can't be seen with the naked eye. 
Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. So someone has written, what about poisonous tarantulas that are very instinctive to bite other people when they come near? So keeping them is better to sedate them or is it better to give them a terrarium? So keeping them is basically giving them a terrarium and tarantulas are actually not poisonous. They are venomous. The difference in this is yep. poison is absorbed, uh, whereas venom is actually injected via a bite or a sting. Uh, and these tarantulas will actually give you a threat posture, a warning before they actually try and attack you. If you do not actually scare them, you have nothing to worry about. What? There's a difference between poison and a venom. Yes, yes. So poison, uh, it is actually absorbed into your body. Like for example, uh, with salamanders, they have poison on their skin. So if I try and eat them, then uh, probably I might get sick. Poisonous invertebrates include uh, millipedes. I also keep millipedes over there. Uh, yeah, okay. Only if you try and eat them, uh, you will get affected. For venomous, uh, those guys uh, actually uh, give the venom in form of a bite or like a sting or like a spike. And it spreads in your body very fast? I don't know about very fast, but some venom spread fast, some spread slow. For most invertebrates, uh, they aren't that dangerous. Their venom is not that harmful. How many spider species are there? More than 15,000. Uh, then someone else has posted, do big spiders bite or harm us? No, they don't. Of course, spiders bite because they need to bite to like catch their prey. But if we do not disturb them or if we... I'm sorry, my internet actually went. I have a question. Yes, yes. Are poison dots um, are poison dot frogs invertebrates and if they uh, are they no they're not invertebrates. They're not but invertebrates. still okay. And only if you try and eat poison dart frogs, uh, the poison will actually get into you. So does the poison make you very sick or does it kill you? Depends on the species. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. Um, what happens if an ant bites me? Uh, actually, nothing. Uh, because ant bites are not uh, venomous or anything. And even if uh, they are venomous, like for example, ant stings, uh, you have nothing to worry about because the stings are just harmless. They will not but kill you or anything. Does it hurt? Sometimes, yeah, depending on species. Like with fire ants, uh, the venom in their sting, uh, uh, when, when they sting you, uh, it might actually burn a little. Many people eat seafood and other reptiles. Yes. Do they pose uh, danger to the body in what? terms of uh, venom or poison if they have been consumed? No, 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 no. Where do I get this information from? Uh, so I have done lots of research. Uh, mm. and, uh, what do you say? I, I learned from other sources because I'm in touch with a few biologists. Okay, someone else has a question. Root dragon is yeah, a poison and can they kill us? Yeah, yeah. No, they don't. They can't. Do I have anthills in my animal room? No, I don't. Arine, which yes. is your favorite invertebrate and why? Oh, I have. Uh, mine is the peacock mantis shrimp. I had covered it in the previous slide. I like them because they are very colorful and uh, they are useful for development of weaponized machines. And also, they can see in three types of light, infrared, UV, and polarized. I also like their hunting strategies. 
Do, do you have them in your possession, Arin? Yes, okay, not we got mantis shrimp. They can smash their way out of aquariums and I don't have any aquariums. Arin. Arin, what is what is infrared and polarized eye and it, and when you say uv is it ultraviolet yes yes uv is ultraviolet infrared and polarized light are lights which we cannot see uh, so there is a so there is something called a light spectrum and mm -hmm. only a little bit of the spectrum is visible to us so oh. uv and infrared are like on the far ends of the spectrum which we cannot see Arina, what is it just about the punch of the mantis shrimp? Like, I didn't get that part. Like, the no, punch of the like specialized legs, which they have in front of their bodies, uh, that to crack open the shells of crabs and clams, they actually, like, give a punch with a lot of speed and force, which can oh, so actually crack open the shells of those crabs. Oh, so it's too Arina, too what do you mean by that? What do you mean by the peacock shrimp mantis? Well, the peacock, peacock, peacock mantis shrimp is the name of the species. They are called okay. so because they have beautiful colors. Like, you know, peacocks also are colorful. And mantis shrimp because they kind of look like underwater praying mantises. Okay. What do you mean like bursting themselves out of aquariums? What do you mean by that? Uh, like punching their way out. They can break glass with that one punch. They are actually only this large. But they can you know, uh, to break their way out of like, uh, glass. Like any form of glass. Uh, I don't know about any form of glass, but I, I, I don't think they can like punch out bulletproof glass. I don't know. The punch is actually very strong though. It is it is strong enough to heat the surrounding water to the temperature of the sun for brief amounts of time. Okay. Uh, I had... Arin, are all these species available in India? What? Are all these species available in India? Uh, not all of them. Uh, some invertebrates like live in other countries. Some live in India. Okay. Yeah. Arin, you yeah. made a video yeah. on the They even the live in India. You had made a video on mantis versus yeah. computer bug. Can you throw some light on it, please? Can I? You had made a video where mantis was facing a computer bug. Yes. Can you just elaborate? Uh, so I had read in, in this book, uh, every creature has a story, that praying mantises would try to catch animations of insects. So I tried to experiment it. I had even filmed it on a video on my channel. You can check it out. Peacock mantis ship prey on and who is their like, predator? Like which mainly bigger fish. Bigger fish. And who does the mantis prey on? Like the mantis or the mantis shrimp? Sorry? You're talking, talking about mantis shrimp, right? I'm talking about the peacock mantis shrimp. Yeah, so what so do they the eat like uh, hard-shelled animals like, you know, crabs. Then you have oysters, clams. That's the reason they have that specialized punch. Arin, yes. so how do you know that an insect is mating or find, fighting with another one of the same kind? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how to answer this, but mainly if they are uh, fighting, they would try to run away from each other. Uh, there are of course exceptions. If they are mating, they will mainly stay like stuck to each other, probably with their abdomens touching together or something, something like that. Okay. Arin, what do you do to keep your like um specialized animals alive in like in your animal, animal room? Like, do you feed them? What do you do? What? Uh, uh, how do I feed them? What do I do? So yeah, what, what I do is, to keep yeah. them alive. Basically, yeah. what do you do to keep them alive? So I give them like small flies because they are predators. Although flies are invertebrates, uh, you have predators of flies like spiders, which I am keeping. I cannot keep flies, so I collect flies from around me and I actually feed it to my animals. Yeah.
Sometimes I don't even have to feed them. Like with, with this uh, radium DNA, it has developed an ecosystem. So there are uh, flies already which are automatically flying into it, and I don't need to worry about feeding the spider in that area. Um, can I actually show you something? What is the invertebrate on my personal wish list? Uh, I don't know if you people have heard about it, but uh, there is a recently discovered uh, tarantula called uh, Biopis simoroxigorum. It has neon blue color on its legs and cream color on its uh, head and abdomen. So it looks very nice. They live in Malaysia. Um, can I show you something? Uh, what, what do you mean by show me something? Like, I want to show you a centipede what I made with moon. You want to see her? What? Um, can I show you? Who is speaking? Okay, wait. Um, uh, so, you want to turn on your video? Yes. Oh, nice. That's a real centipede. No. Arine, the link which you sent for people in the chat box, it's actually not clickable. It means it's not coming in blue. It's coming uh, in You copy black. the link, uh, like you select the link and then you paste it into your browser. Okay. 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 Uh, so, any other questions? Okay, wait, there's a message. Someone posted the link which is actually clickable. Yeah. Why do millipedes or centipedes roll up and what is my opinion in the matter? So uh, millipedes have very strong exoskeletons, which is their outer casing, that, uh, that outer skeleton. And they roll up into a ball because like when they feel threatened, they like, lay, uh, they, like coil up. So their uh, very strong armor is actually facing outside. So if the predator tries to actually uh, eat the millipede, then it's it's tough to break into and also on that armor the millipede's poison is there so the so the bird whatever is trying to eat the millipede will get sick if it tries to eat it centipedes generally stay uh, clumped up in one location uh, they don't call up for defense what they do is uh, they will either jump they will they will try to uh, bite the thing but they are not dangerous I don't have a centipede, but I have a huge moth if you want to see. Uh, what in your opinion is a better uh, better invertebrate millipede or centipede? What? What in your opinion is a better invertebrate a millipede or a centipede? Uh, I, I like centipedes better because uh, they have far cooler appearances and uh, I like the fact that they are carnivorous. But that's just me. Oh, wow. That's a live moth? Yeah, I gave eggs today morning. Where did it come on your hand? Uh, just came. I mean, it was laying eggs a few like yesterday oh, night. Right. So it laid a lot of eggs and now... That's with me. So, yeah. Now a question to ask to all of you. Uh, now are you actually interested in invertebrates like spiders or centipedes, stuff like that? Yeah. Yes. Invertebrates don't have bones, correct? Yes, yes, correct. And vertebras means uh, they have spine and bones like human beings and other they animals. They don't have spine and bones like human beings. No, they don't. Okay. All I learned in my school, so I'm just trying to refresh okay, okay. by asking you. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting uh, topic huh, today. Got to know about my young school life and what our teachers taught us. Mm. So now you are our new teacher, Arin. <laughs> yeah, I'm overwhelmed by your speech, your talk and the kind of uh, information that you've shared with us about the tiny insects creatures yes. and uh, 
all other living beings, the tiny ones. In fact, all the insects, they lay eggs uh, in their reproduction. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. What is the largest size? Which uh, insect has the uh, largest in size, according to you, Arun? Which insect? Uh, not as uh, so largest in size. Yeah, yeah. The largest. It, it uh, the giant snake insect. It can uh, it can be like this large. It is very very thin and very long. They are called snake okay. insects because they they look like snakes and they camouflage themselves in that way on trees. So predators do not eat them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there an African thing like a giant centipede? A giant centipede? I don't have a giant centipede in my possession, but I actually have two baby centipedes which are like around this large. And when they when they like become adults, they'll be like I don't know six to eight inches. Hey, I mean, the yes? common insects that we find at home. And or the most common insect which I find at my house, like in my home. Anyone's house? What can I find in my house? Uh, there are uh, there are these creatures called cellar spiders. If you look up on your ceiling, you might see those uh, tiny brown spiders with long legs. Those are cellar spiders. They are fairly common. Over here also you have those creatures. Uh, you have jumping spiders also, which occasionally visit. Which are which are the which are the dangerous ones that you found at home that we. Over here, uh, at home, over here, you will not find any dangerous creatures. Uh, if you if you are looking for dangerous invertebrates, uh, some of them are found uh, in uh, I don't know. Uh, some sometimes they are found in uh, very dark areas in your house. Uh, but over here, I don't think you have anything to worry about. What? Do you touch your centipedes? Did I catch my centipedes? Yes, I did. Okay, that's Cooper. What do they feel like? What? What do they feel like? Uh, I did not hold it, but once I've held a centipede, uh, I don't know. It, it, it feels as if like, I don't know, something is walking. Kind of ticklish, I'm not sure. Are tardigrades the tiniest invertebrates? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but I. I think there must be a uh, creature smaller than that. Someone wants to see a tour of my animal room next time. I have actually made a video about it uh, on YouTube, so you can see that. So, any other questions? Irene, is is keeping in. And invertebrates easier than keeping, like, say, maybe a fish or a cat or a dog. Uh, yes, Is yes, yes. They are uh, very low maintenance pets. Uh, they, they generally, they are mostly independent creatures, uh, not like dogs or cats who always require your company most of the time. So, so all you have to do is uh, you can like put it in an enclosure, and mostly the only maintenance you need to do is feed it or rehouse it into a bigger home if it grows big and uh, probably water in the enclosure once in a while. Okay, and do you know if invertebrates have, uh, are they able to build emotional connect with people? Uh, no. Okay. Are they, yes. Are they, won't it get messier if they, if they procreate and keep procreating? Then how do we control? What do you mean? Uh, if they, uh, if you are keeping one and they, uh, and, and if they mate and lay eggs, what I do is I generally separate all the babies, keep them in separate birds, and uh, if there are extra, uh, I, I don't know extra, but if there are extra, I think uh, probably you could uh, either sell it to someone else. Uh, if you are a seller, or uh, you could release those in the wild, those extra babies, if you want to. So spider. Okay. Said something. Wait. What is your take on uh, pest control that people do? Pest control is actually uh, kind of uh, 
uh, harmful not to the not only to the invertebrates but also to a human. So when you spray the pesticides on plants and all to get rid of let's say slugs or snails, uh, what is actually happening is we are eating the plants or those crops, and uh, the poisons in the pesticides are actually harming us. That's right. But if we don't do that, then and there is a in probably a cockroach infection or something like that. Then how do we control that? How do we control? What what is, is, do you have any other better alternative? Uh, what is the alternative? Uh, probably if you find a cockroach, you could like take like a cup like this. Uh, or and put it on top. You can slide a hard card underneath and probably just release it outside. Yes. So, any more questions? Oh, why? Why do? Why do some species of insects eat the eat the young? Uh, some might eat their young. Uh, so what happens is when uh, a creature, let's say a spider, lays eggs uh, and those eggs hatch, the mother will take care of the spiderlings or the babies for some time. But uh, after some time, she will uh, leave the babies so that they can go and fend for themselves. Like, you know how birds let their uh, babies go out of the nest to do their own yeah. stuff? Yeah, but if one of the babies decides to stay back, or, or the mother comes in contact with her babies once again, she will try to eat them if she's hungry. Sometimes it could be out of stress. Sometimes she could eat her young out of stress. That happens many times. Like when a, like, let's say when a centipede or a spider has babies again, uh, and if I disturb them too much, the mother will think that the babies will not be able to fend for themselves because there's a, a so-called predator, although it's just you accidentally disturbing them and will actually eat the babies out of stress. And, and why do some insects also eat like their mates? Uh, it's, they don't always do that, but some insects like praying mantises, they eat their mate uh, uh, to get more energy. Like after the mating is done, uh, the female might eat the male to get more energy because the female mantis needs a lot of energy to produce her eggs. She produces like at least 20 to 30 eggs in an egg sac called an oothika. It's like the egg sac is around this large for a big mantis species. So she needs energy. And if the male has okay. not managed to mate properly, the female might try to eat him. If she's full, she won't actually eat the males. And anyways, the males are going to die uh, soon after mating like because that's the end of their life. That's all they've lived for. They've lived to grow, eat, and mate with the females. So anyways, they have reached the end of their lives. So the females, so might as well the females could eat the males. Okay. Hari? Yes. Uh, how many years do the uh, immortal jellyfish live? They are biologically immortal, so like for... For a long time. I mean, they don't actually, uh, if they are left alone and if they are kept properly, they will actually not die. The oldest specimen found is like thousands of years old. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, then where means, I mean, which habitat, where do they live? In the oceans. Okay. Like deep and uh, deep underwater, like not near the surface, okay. close to the abyss, I think. Okay. So anyone else has questions? Okay. Can you show a video tour of your animal room as it is the best way to inspire you? Okay. I actually have the video here on the channel. I'll just copy the link and post. So does this bring us to the end of the Q&A? Okay, still thinking. Hello. Yes. Sorry, when are you planning your next webinar? 
I have no clue. I have no clue. I will do one, so but I will to learn more. Yes. We will be interested in a webinar on snakes. On snakes, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I I still have to plan the future webinars. Uh, if I have a next webinar, it could probably be on uh, keeping invertebrates as pets because I've got a lot of questions in today's webinar about the about that. So I think that brings us to the end of Q and A. So. I hope the webinar interested you and all of you guys liked it. Thank you everyone for attending on a Sunday morning. Excuse uh, me, Arun. Yes. I have one more question that uh, if like you keep them in enclosures, how do the they breathe? I mean, they don't get any air inside, right? I have an enclosure here. It has wire mesh on top, as you can see. It has. You see how this yeah, mesh has. But those mesh. who don't have, but which don't have the wire, wire mesh on top. So uh, I make holes on the sides, and I also put cotton because cotton is a good uh, ventilation medium. It helps uh, because cotton has lots of air spaces, so the air can easily circulate. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So thank you everyone for attending. I hope uh, invertebrates have become interesting to you guys. Have they? Yes. 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 yes very much. Thank yes. So. Thank uh, you very much. So. Yes. Thank you very much, Arin. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Arin. Uh, Thanks, Arin. Spending our time. It was a lovely webinar, Arin. Really enjoyed. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Arin. It was really informative. Thank you, Andy. It was very cool. All right. So, thank you everyone for attending again. Thanks for showing your support. Uh, I don't know. As a call to action, I could ask you guys to again go to the go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. The link has been given in the chat box. So yeah, goodbye nature lovers.